welcome back after tea break let's let's get back to as 15 so we have done short term benefits we have done post employment benefits now is the time for other long term benefits sir nps is a defined contribution plan right and contributory provident fund is also a defined contribution plan right so in case of contributory provident fund gratuity is eligible but in case of nps it is not eligible sir see in case of nps your nps contribution is uh, calculated on the basic pay plus da that da component is there but in case of cpf only basic pay is taken into consideration so in that way uh, some additional benefits the government is already giving to you compared to the cpf isn't that another thing is there no what we are feeling it is cpf per come gratuity scheme your nps is not nps come gratuity scheme so tomorrow if government declares that there may be a gratuity scheme linked to nps then we'll have to think about this thing now it is because cpf come gratuity no no that means that means nps is not covering gratuity uh, no oh, yeah as of now as of now but dead gratuity is also not eligible you have a question you want to answer is in, uh, is under nps dead gratuity is also not eligible okay. ma'am There are many people who want to answer your question. <laughs> so more than questions, I have answers now. <laughs> uh, in fact, uh, uh, whether this letter has been received by other issuers or not, this gratuity is being allowed with the NPS. In fact, that's why I wanted to share. Gratuity is being uh, gratuity is being uh, given along with the NPS. That letter uh, letter is there from the government. <laughs> gratuity will be given for those those who are inducted in NPS. The gratuity pension will also be given to them. Pension act is covered under Pension Act and gratuity is covered under Gratuity Act. Two act is completely yes, different. There is no yes, relation between uh, pension and gratuity. We will share. We will share that later. See, It is there. See, let's 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 discuss NPS separately some other time. <laughs> yes, it's a it's a entirely new. Uh, area of problems uh, no sir no sir it should be cleared because we have to make the provisions in our in the accounting so it should be cleared sir see, because if uh, gratuity see, is due then we have to provide the provision see problem uh, definitely is the provision has to be made for that i think i think mr bokshi i would request on behalf of this house mr bokshi may organize an one separate workshop on mps, MPS. no no to actually for implementing to clear sorry sir queries. excuse me for implementing actual accrual accounting provision is to be made so this should be clear now problem is nps is not clear hence accounting is not clear once nps is clear we can give you the accounting <laughs> let's let's proceed to uh, other long term benefits Okay, we have discussed uh, leave encashment in other long-term benefits. What happens to sabbatical leaves? Is there eligibility for sabbatical leaves? Yes. 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 How many? Uh, yes, yes. Please. How many leaves is uh, eligible after how many years? How many leaves? One year leave after five years. Do you make a provision for this? do you account for this leave no how is this leave different from leave encashment only that it cannot be encashed no i am saying how is it different from your normal leave encashment because it cannot be encashed only difference is encashment otherwise it is like any other leave right now we spoke in the morning that even if it is not encashed we should make a provision for this based on actuarial valuation uh, sabbatical leaves of one year after five years the eligibility which you have you should make a provision for the same from the first year onwards basis your estimates of how many people will take leave of what period and as i said because you know today we are working extra so that we get compensated after five years hence we should account for that compensation which i will receive after 5 years today onwards so there should be a provision made for the sabbatical leave also and that should be basis actuarial valuation because it is other long term employee benefits any questions on this yes absolutely hence we should estimate 
how many people will take this leave? So my estimate will be probably only 10% of my employees will go for a sabbatical leave. Uh, maybe 5%, maybe 2%. Right. So I can I can cre create a provision basis ex my estimates and those estimates can be made by actually. My only point is even if one employee is going to take that leave, I should account for that one employee. How this estimate will be done? That estimate will be done by actually. You just have how many faculty are likely to take sabbatical leave? How it will be arrived? Because it's very difficult, almost uncertain. See, it varies to university to university, region to region, zone to zone. Absolutely. See, when, when, when there is an actuary, actuary is a professional person who is trained to be actuary. They are trained to make these estimates, so estimates are not to be done by us. The actuary can do, do the calculation. First of all, we have to give the input. You have to give the data that how many professors I have, how many years they have worked, what is my past experience? How basis? That, how that data will be arrived? Sorry? In university, how many faculty are going to take sabbatical leave? How it will be? I have to give them data of how many faculties I have. They will estimate how many faculties will take leave. I have to give them the facts, which is these many faculties I have. These are working for these many years. My in my past. Uh, say they will they will calculate basis my past that in last four years how many faculties have taken sabbatical actually leave what, actually what happened all of a sudden 10 faculty applies for sabbatical leave nobody knows huh. who will apply when apply huh. it depends upon what work they have to do right uh, it is very very difficult to know uh, the estimation sir any other leave is as difficult as sabbatical leave no, no I will uh, not know how many employees will go for a one month leave in the next Yes. So far, leave in casement, our leave is considered that is as per rule. But sabbatical leave optional. One can take, one cannot take. Because it is not incasable. See, basically, there is an estimate. Estimate might go wrong and estimates have to be done by actually. That is what accrual basis of accounting is. It might be difficult and your estimates might go wrong. Yeah. But then you have to estimate something so that I provide for it right now because it will happen in future. Okay. If nothing happens, I will reverse the provision. If excess happens, I have to create more expenditure. But I have to book something, I have to create something over the years. But in it case might be very nominal amount. It might be, you know, you have to estimate that. Actually, in case of sabbatical variance, variance would be very high. Very difficult to predict. Maybe, but you have to do that and actually will do that. <laughs> okay, then this problem we will have to face in the university. Sorry? See, child care leave also you will have to give data to actually that these many women employees, I don't know now, even uh, paternal leaves are there. Yes. <laughs> Not just maternal leaves, there are paternal leaves in some organization. So then you have to see these, these estimates I or you cannot make. These estimates have to be made by actuary only. Now, first of all, you have to think whether these are material. For a year, I mean, if a person goes on a paternal leave or maternal leave. Child care leave, something different. Child care leave, chalo, yes. child care leave. I have to first estimate whether there will be a material impact in that year if a person goes. And how many person will go on a child care leave in a year? So you have to estimate whether, whether there is an impact which is material. If yes, then you have to ask actually to calculate the impact and start making a provision today onwards. As per AS15, whatever leaves eligibility an employee has, you have to make a list of those. See, basically what, I, what an organization does is, they have a HR policy. HR policy will list down eligibility of all the leaves. Basis that HR policy and actually calculates provision. So he knows what is the eligibility of each and every leave. So that is what you have to do. You have to give Hello. a complete list of leaves which an employee is eligible to take. Sir, actually we are making provision to calculate the, to estimate the future liabilities. Right. In case of sabbatical leave, uh, any liability is coming in uh, future liability is arising? Is it a paid leave? No. No, we are not, it, uh, yes, sorry, uh, uh, paid leave, but we are not carrying forward. Any future liability not, is not arising. It is a paid leave? Yes. Yes. You are paying, but he is not working? Yes. Yes. 
because he is not working you are not able to generate revenue from his services in future also no one in second. that case suppose on the in the 6th year he takes a sabbatical leave right. you are paying him salary right. yes he is not working yes because he is not working i am not able to generate revenue yes but i still have to pay, pay him for his salary for that period yes now why am i paying him that sabbatical leave salary because he has provided me service for 5 years or 6 there years or 10 years difference so i have to between, make a provision each year there is year. specific difference between two type of leaves one normal leave encashment and the sabbatical leave absolutely in case of normal leave encashment specific liability is arising i have to pay something but in case of sabbatical leave there is no specific liability is arising so in that case we have to make provision or not my accumulating leaves can be of two types vesting non vesting vesting leaves are those which can be encashed non vesting leaves are those which cannot be encashed i explained in the morning that whether i can encash a leave or i may not be able to encash a leave i am i have to still make a provision because in a in a particular period an employee is providing me extra service for which he is compensated in the next period maybe 6 years hence maybe 10 years hence maybe 15 years hence because he is being compensated for a service he is provided in the past i have to make provision in the past i mean i have to start making provision today onwards so that i can make i have that fund created for the future now i might have to pay the fund as leave encashment or i might have to pay it as a normal salary but there is a expenditure for me against which there is no revenue but sir actually if i take the whole period of service of a particular employee in that case no liability will arise and the, in that case this is my opinion that pr uh, prudence will prevail and why, liability why are you has paying not him to be when he is not providing service will you pay to any person be, be, uh, even if he is not providing any service i will not pay him anything if he is not providing me service why why will i pay him a salary in that case actually uh, a person who has given 30 years of service Haan. and have not taken uh, any sabbatical leave right. you are paying a certain amount so suppose 30 lakhs right and a person who has given 30 years of service and i have given 30 lakhs Haan. and he has given service of 29 years 6 uh, 29 right. years 6 Haan. months so payment is 30 lakhs and service has given 29 years 30 lakhs right if i take the whole year whole period of service then no separate liability is arising so i think this is my opinion in that case prudence will prevail your, your, and liability has not to be made your idea of accrual concept is incorrect because see when he provides me 30 years of service without taking any leaves okay basically he is providing me services the employee the employer is benefiting because he is not taking any leaves i am talking about only sabbatical leave any leave i am talking about any leave no, no, other sabbatical leave, leave i agree with you what you have told whether it other is, leave is fine whether it is encashable or not encashable i am paying him for a period without him providing me any service why am i doing that because he has provided me service for past 5 years 6 years 10 years because of that he is getting a benefit of one year and hence those years should have a extra hit in the pnl in the income and expenditure account okay you are not you are not convinced i'll give you an example okay previously people used to think that earth is not round earth is rectangular someone said no earth is round or earth is oval okay that time people were shocked how can earth be oval mereko to dikh nahi raha gol mereko to seedha dikh raha aaj agar koi aapke aapko bole ki earth is not oval earth is triangle will you accept do you know earth is oval or earth is round or earth is square or earth is triangle can you see it there might be reasoning i am also explaining the reasoning it is about whether you are accepting the reasoning i just want to know my last friend why does you sanction sabbat what is the purpose of that sabbat you try to explain when a professor applied and a sanction is given for sabbatical what are the reasons behind it what are the reasons just explain right that means he is contributing indirectly to the university to the institutes that's why he is been sabbatical that means he is working actually he is working 
So why are you trying to bring some unrelated matter and digress the speaker? Sabbatical ka purpose is altogether different. He is working, actually. He is actually working. So then there is no, comi no, uh, no question for provision. That's why on regular salary he is getting. There is no question of provisioning carrying forward. He is writing a book or he is doing higher studies and that university will be benefited by his studies. Then sir, there is no he... question of making provision. Huh? That's then there is no is question of making that provision. That is why I am trying to say. That is the reason. So that is why I am trying to say. Normal, uh, a normal salary. I see, think we are not... Uh, either... Uh, see, see. Let, let there us... There is no specific liability. Clearly, when I will make provision. Okay, one, one second. How many people are not convinced? If, if there are very few who are not convinced, then I will move on and we will cover this later. If there are more people who are not convinced, then let us, let us discuss this. So, we will continue. I will discuss with you later on separately. Right? So, point what you explained is CTC actually, cost to the company. Right, cost to company, cost CTC. To company. It and is absolutely… As per matching concept, it has to appear following the accrual accounting system. Fine. Whether paid… Not he is not convinced, I will discuss with him later on. Rest of you all are convinced, I am happy. Okay, there are two types of termination benefits, notice pay and VRS. As I said, these two benefits, you will come to know only when it actually arises. And hence, these two benefits, you will make a provision only when you are committed to it. When I say committed, that means a VRS I have announced that I will give VRS to 50 employees. Now, then as an employer, I am committed to this scheme. So, I should make a provision for this scheme at that time. Similarly, notice pay. Notice pay is, uh, I should make a provision only when that happens. So, these two benefits, I will not make a provision today. I will not do any discounting. I will not do any actual valuation. I should account for these two benefits only when it comes. Booking of expense, whenever it comes is expense to liability and then I pay off liability to bank. A summary of whatever we did today, there are four types of benefits, as I said, short term, post employment, other long term, termination. Short term, you don't have any actual valuation. Post employment, I said defined benefit plan, you have to do actual valuation, defined contribution plan, no actual valuation. Other long term benefits, yes, you have to do long, uh, actual valuation, it might be your leave encashment. Termination benefit, again, no actual valuation because you will account for those termination benefits whenever it comes. That's the end of accounting standard 15.